Hi, brothers and sisters. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it is said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading, from the book of Leviticus, it states that we are to be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Our gospel ends with a very similar message. So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The rest of our readings that we heard today explain what this admonishment, be holy, be perfect, requires of us. From Leviticus, a picture is painted for us. A plan is sketched out for human holiness. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This passage calls Israel to be holy and immediately directs them to love others because the Lord loves them. Thus, they act as their God does because they are meant to be in a covenant relationship with God. To be in a covenant with God requires that we live loving lives. Our responsorial psalm today is also filled with covenant language. It tells us that God is merciful and gracious, abounding in kindness, filled with compassion. Being in a covenant with God calls us to be like God, merciful and gracious, abounding in kindness and filled with compassion. If we are true to this covenant, it allows us to be transformed, and we will indeed be holy and perfect like God is. In our gospel, we are reinforced with these sentiments. A key to understanding the Sermon on the Mount is really contained in the first part of Matthew's Sermon on the Mount in, verse, in chapter 5, verse 17, and we heard it just a couple of weeks ago, but we have to keep it in mind to understand what Jesus is talking about. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. And then he says, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So we have Jesus talking about righteousness. And last week and this week, he gives us case studies in righteousness. These six cases on anger, adultery, divorce, Oaths, retaliation, and love of enemies are not exhaustive, all-inclusive, or complete, but they are informative of what Jesus is trying to show us. What is Jesus trying to say with these examples? The mere outward observation of the law does not produce love. Imagine a couple who merely keep the Ten Commandments in their marriage by saying, 
Our marriage is wonderful. We don't steal from each other. We don't lie to each other or cheat on each other. And we haven't even killed each other yet. Would that describe the ideal marriage? Of course not. God doesn't want spouses simply to avoid he hurting each other. He wants them to grow in love. And that's what God desires for all of his disciples. Certainly, we should avoid doing anything directly that hurts other people, such as killing, adultery, or lying. Obeying the moral law is a necessary minimum, but in order to live as members of God's kingdom, we need to do more. As true disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to transform our hearts and build up love. We do this with patience, meekness, purity and mercy, as Jesus teaches in the Sermon on the Mount. This is why Jesus calls us to go beyond the external conformity of the requirements of the law and to imitate the perfect love that the Heavenly Father has for us and for each other. Last two cases were about anger, adultery, divorce, and oaths. This week, we hear about retaliation and love of enemies. Jesus declares that retribution as a form of justice is not acceptable for his followers. Some may think that it's fair, but it's not what God wants us to do and not want us to live like. Life in the reign of God calls for a different kind of interaction with each other. Jesus gives three examples. Rather than retaliate when insulted, Jesus' followers should respond in a nonviolent manner. They should generously relinquish their possessions, and they should be willing to be inconvenienced themselves to help others. Jesus even extends the love of neighbor to love of your enemies. We are to pray for those who persecute us for our beliefs. This radical commandment, when we attempt to live it, applies to all of us in our lives. What does it mean for us to love our enemies? To pray for those who harm us. It cannot mean that we should overlook any evil that might victimize us. But what it calls us to remember is that we are all God's children, both good and bad people, the just and the unjust. We may not be able to shower blessings on people like God does, but we must learn to refrain from seeking revenge. This command is one of the most difficult to follow, along with the call to forgiveness. But we have been called to be holy and perfect as God is. This requires mercy, graciousness, kindness, and the compassion of God. We are called to love as God loves. Our society, which tells us that we should do unto others before they do unto us, would call this kind of love foolishness. But if you listen carefully to St. Paul's reading today, he responds to this attitude by stating that it is the wisdom of this world that is actually foolish in the eyes of God. We can live unselfish love, for we have the power of the Spirit of God. As Paul reminds us, we are temples of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in each and every one of us. We are called to live as the temple of the Lord. We are called to be holy and perfect. In the simplest of terms, it means being like God in every aspect of our lives. Perfection is not a matter of doing everything perfectly, but of loving others as we love God himself and he loves us. The love to which Jesus calls us is beyond our own capacity for fallen human nature, but the gift of the Holy Spirit received through faith and the sacraments of the church do make it possible. Jesus calls us to a heavenly way of life. The saints have shown us that it is possible to live this way on earth. May this Eucharist give us the strength and courage to be holy and perfect as our Father in heaven is holy and perfect. And may the peace of Jesus Christ, which far exceeds the peace of this world can offer us, come down upon you and remain with you forever.